Okay, just a quick update on this project. Um, I have added a second valve. And as you might notice from the front panel, I have now got filament 1, filament 2 rear stats. Um, and above you can see two valves. No, that's the original valve, that's filament 1. And uh, filament 2 puts a filament on for this one. Um, so basically without any filament current, there's no current draw through that one, so the valve is in effect not in circuit. The rest of it is still the same. I've changed the circuit a little bit, see if I can get that into view. Here we go. I have added a HL210, which is a, a 1929 um, for signs of the valve being out. Let's see. LT comes in, second rheostat for the filament of that one. Um, 150 volts HT, two microfarad cap, transformer for a speaker. I've actually got a, a 3 or 4 ohm speaker on the output. It's not uh, perfectly matched. And I've got a grid leak capacitor, which is 100k. And that goes off to a minus 3 volts grid bias battery. And uh, 0 0.1 mic cap goes off to position X and that is basically uh, something I'll show you in a second. The other thing I've actually done is stuck a 25k resistor from the 150 volts HT line, actually from this point, and that is now feeding the first valve stage. That's coming in at this point and it drops it down to 90 volts and the actual first valve is working better at 90 volts than it was at 150 volts. I've been told it could probably work better even down if I got it down to 60 volts. The whole thing might work better down at 60 volts, I'm just not sure. And position X where I took the audio from is after the choke on this side of the transformer. So that is where a few volts of AC are actually being generated from the demodulated RF input. So I can still use headphones if I want to by turning the other filament off or turn the second filament on by this rheostat and use a small speaker. It is certainly not loud but it means to say I, I can sit here at the desk and not particularly need the headphones but I'm not going to disturb any neighbours you can put it like that okay I'll show you the uh, the top layout I shall just readjust the camera okay this is having a look at the top I've got HT on it so I've got to again watch the fingers second valve HT210 the first HL sorry HL210 the first valve was a 210 HL I hope I'm saying that right round. Um, first stage as before, coils, tuning cap, loading, reaction, RF chalk and a bit of decoupling. Changed a few transformers around, so now the headphone transformer is a smaller one at the back. Um, again, none of these are matching impedances, I know that much. But, I've added a small grid bias battery which is given minus three volts that's for this one and there's my audio takeoff from the top of the chalk it goes to um, the cap which was across the transformer a 1.5 nanofarad something like that and I've also added as I say um, grid bias I've got a cap which is a 10 or 8 or 10 nan um, connected to the negative supply. The grid bias comes in and goes to a 100k resistor, which could be seen down there, which feeds the grid. And the audio input from the top of the chalk via the capacitor also goes to that same point. Um, the second rheostat is here and the filament feed 
is uh, down at that point. Um, the HT for this one is coming in via a 2 mic cap being dropped to the transformer and then from the transformer going to the anode or plate depending on which country you're in uh, get called various things so it's a very simple circuit whatever I'm driving the grid with biasing the grid with a grid battery and the anode load is the transformer to HT and here if you can see it is a 25k resistor that I'm actually using between one 2 mic cap and a second 2 mic cap that's smoothing the point at that but that's allowing um, the HT to drop to 90 volts at that point the front end stage is taking about 2.3 milliamps the second valve when it's um, drawing current is typically 3 milliamps so the whole thing is less than 6 milliamps about 5.5 milliamps in total as I say it's not going to break any uh, windows or disturb the neighbours that too much I've put a, a simple small communication speaker in here I really could do with something which is um, horn type or big box type of, of the uh, the correct type from the dates but they seeming to cost uh, quite a lot of money nowadays so let's put it on I'll move the camera down and see if we can listen to some radios uh, radio stations through the speaker and just give you an idea of what this is it is not a power valve I do have some power valves but I'd have to use this to drive a power valve making it a three valve and I think that's taking it a little bit too far for this so um, in fact I don't have enough valve holders to take it any further so let's uh, readjust the camera and just have a quick listen see if I can get some music and some speech off the radio without disturbing the uh, copyright situation okay we'll start off with um, listening to talk sport I've just tuned that in this would now be off to headphones or to that other amplifier I've actually uh, you've seen before on the on the previous video what I'm going to do Turn up the second filament, and we get a bit of audio from uh, the speaker, which is just up here. This one. Again, I can take it too far and cause it to oscillate. So that's that. And I can either use the filament two or turn the reaction down to adjust the volume. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. At least when I've got that on, I'm not going to get any copyright notices for music. But it works. It's not, as I say, ear shattering. Um, but it is promising and might need uh, a bit more thought. Some decent transformers, some matching transformers for the valves would go a long way, I think, to give a bit more audio and more of a period type uh, speaker. But anyhow, that was the second part of the project. I hope you enjoyed watching it, um, taking any note of it, and if it encourages anybody else to build something, then I hope it does. Thanks for watching.